Hi, my name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to this edition of Creative Cow's Photoshop and After Effects podcast. Today, we're going to take a look at how you can use Adobe Photoshop and After Effects together to really get some 3D extrusion. We're going to take some photos and split them out into 3D space, as well as use some refine edge command and the content aware fill option to quickly build our layers that we can sort of pop out and then move around in with the 3D camera. Let's take a look. Let's just start here over in Photoshop with this particular layer, and I want to show you the Refine Edge command. I'm going to toss at it a pretty difficult image, so we hit W for the Quick Selection tool, and we just drag through and let it make its own basic selection. Now you see it did a pretty good job, and what I'm going to do is click Refine Edge. In doing this, it brings up a new dialog, and you want to check Smart Radius so it can analyze the scene, and then adjust that. And what it's going to do is attempt to find the edges of the hair, as you see there. Did a pretty good job. I can go ahead and smooth that out a little bit if I want, and I could even shift that edge in or out to contract or expand. You also have the ability to choose to decontaminate the colors at the edge to pick up on some of that color spill that we would have with light blonde hair over a dark backdrop. If you take the paintbrush here, you can actually paint on areas that you want to add or subtract to, and you see that this forces it to sort of reanalyze that hair. So by painting over the transition areas, it will create its own custom transition at that edge, and it does a great job of cleaning that up. I can then turn that into a new layer with the layer mask and click OK, and you see there we've done a great job of extracting out the woman from the backdrop. Let's go ahead and save that, and we're going to switch to a new image here and we'll do the same thing over here. I'm going to remove the bear. Let's start by duplicating this layer here for a second, and we're just going to go ahead and select our edges. There we go. If it gets too much, hold down the Option or Alt key and you could subtract. That's pretty good there. Click the Refine Edge button and the same thing. Smart Radius, adjust that out so it analyzes the hair. Very complex image there. You could paint over areas that you want it to reanalyze, or Option Paint if it gets too much to fill it back in. There we go. Doing pretty good. Just paint in a little bit there on the face. Good. And that's looking good. Paint in a little more. Good. Shift that edge out so it's expanded. Paint over my tough problem spots that I want to touch up. Good. We'll put a little bit of feathering on that. And we'll decontaminate the edge color and tell it to make a new layer with mask. So same thing happened there. We can go ahead and zoom in if we needed to. And because this is a mask, I could paint with white there if I needed to with my paintbrush, B for brush. Click on the mask so it's selected. And just paint a little bit back in there on the lips there, which are a little bit of a tough area. And you see I could fix that in pretty well. So fully adjustable. Let's name that. We'll call that bear. And I'm going to load that selection of the bear, come on down here to this layer, and let's just expand that out. Modify, expand, we'll do 10 pixels, press Shift Delete to bring up Content Aware Fill, and click OK, and it's going to analyze the background image and attempt to create a new fill pattern for us based on the existing texture. You see it did a pretty good job pretty quickly. We can of course always select our clone stamp tool here. and touch up this transition zone if we want. I'll often brush at a lower opacity like 50 and just create a little bit more randomness in there. But for a first pass, that content aware fill did a great job 
And remember, we're not going to completely replace this background. We just want a little bit of a layer there as we extrude this. So we'll call this Zoo. There we go. I'm going to save that as a PSD file. Great. And come on over to After Effects where we can import them both in. Let's just double click. We'll grab those two layers. Grab the bear, grab the hair, bring those in as compositions, and click Open. Now, they come on in pretty quickly with layers intact. We're going to open up the bear document, and what I've got here is the bear on its own layer. I'm going to quickly make those 3D layers and add two comp views here so this is a little easier to see. There we go. The right is the viewfinder, the left is going to be the set. I'll set that to custom view one, add my 3D camera. There we go. We'll choose a preset here, like a 50 millimeter lens. Click OK. There it is. You can see the camera. And what we're basically going to do is push this zoo layer further away in 3D space. But as we do that, we need to adjust its scale back up so it touches the edge of our document there. So what we've just done is created a relationship between the bear and the backdrop. I could even go over now and just simply move the camera. Let's change the composition settings to match the delivery that I need. In this case, standard definition. Got my 3D camera. And we could do a simple camera move. I could adjust the position of the camera here, as well as its point of interest. Do a little bit of a leading look. There we go. And we'll adjust the zoom of the camera too, as well as position. Come on down a little further in the scene. Have the camera swing through a bit. Adjust its point of interest. There we go. Move on back a little to reveal more of the scene. And what you see there is we have a little bit of a relational movement between the foreground and background layer. Because there's separation, as we swing the camera through, we actually get that sense of perspective from foreground to background with some movement. And not that we're going to actually do this, but if we were feeling a little bit wicked, we could go into that other comp, and let's just check how good our composition was. Copy, paste, let's drop her in. We've got the rough edges of her hair there. Let's just scale her down a little bit. And we'll actually flip-flop her so she's on the other side. We can make that a 3D layer and adjust her position in relationship to everything else. There we go. Scale it up a little. And you'll see that both of them could be in the same scene here. Notice how her hair is working within that scene. And we'll just go back to a single view here. And look at how all of the texture of the lake, all of that color has been removed. So you see you've got the option to start to composite layers together, swap out the backdrop, mix it in. And that refine edge command is really quite impressive. Notice the intersection there of the fine hair details with the backdrop and each other. You've got clean edges. So take advantage of it. The Refine Edge command, absolutely awesome. This is just a small taste of 3D motion control. Just wanted to show you how those layers can be mixed together in 3D space to create new composites. For Creative Cow, my name's Rich Harrington.